morning. It's Sam Via here, and I am so excited about today. As you know, we're not a color brand, yet very excited because today I've got a special guest. And this special guest, I just have to tell you guys, he's just one of my favorite guys that I just, I love being with, and I love working with him on stage. When I think about somebody that thinks out of the box, somebody that's in innovative, somebody that's uh, a creative, somebody that's out, um, uh, unconventional, if you will, I think of this guy. And it's one of the first days I really met him. I, had, I discovered I had to listen to him and really listen to him uh, talk because I thought, what did he just say? But the descriptor of words, you know, the choice of words that I use to describe color it's just incredible in terms of when I think about this guy. You, some of you may know him. A lot of you may know him. Some of you may not know him, but I'm talking about the man, Justin Isaac. We've been working together at, with the Redkin Stable of Artists for probably over 20 years now. And uh, this guy just has a great imagination. I always remember that I would enjoy allowing Justin to color my models, and then I would love to cut to his color. And we would really discuss, I mean, he was so methodical and so concerned about his application, his color placement, that he would really have me section these haircuts first and then he'd say, okay, I'm going to do this, this, and this. It may not be the color. Sometimes I didn't understand what he would say, but when he went in and did it and then he handed the color to me, I was like, wow. I mean, your eyes just popped out. So today I have this particular uh, painting that you see behind me. And you have to excuse me, but i Purchased this at the at the America's Beauty Show in Chicago uh, about three years ago, and I forgot the artist's name. I was looking for her name on the photo itself, on the picture itself, and was unable to locate it. But I was really impressed with her in terms of what I saw and what she did in her work, and I bought a couple of those paintings. I pulled this one out, this one out today, because I thought this particular one just reminded me of Justin and just how high hope. And Cindy, good morning. Hi, Sarah Matt. And it just reminded me, um, yeah, Sarah Justin's one of my favorite people too. But it just reminded me of Justin when I looked at this. I thought, wow, that's pretty interesting and cool. Once again, something very unconventional. I think you have to look at it once, twice, maybe even three times. And when I met Justin, that's what I discovered was that I had to look at his color a couple times before I could really figure out what Justin was doing or where he was going with it and what he was going to do with it. So this guy just met, brought out a lot of creativity out of me. He made me think a little bit differently in terms of the way I cut hair and the way that I sectioned my haircuts because I noticed when Justin would color, he would sit there and he would really think about his sectioning pattern and how that was going to affect his color placement. And I always talk about the marriage of a cut and color and how they go together. But one of the things that Justin would always share with me, he would share with me, bro, it's not about, they're not married. They're just dating because eventually things are going to change, you know. And that's one thing that I appreciated about this guy. And, yes, I'm talking about that man right there. That's right, that man right there. I'm talking about my man, Justin Isaac. And, uh, Justin, how are you, brother? Good morning, Sammy. I'm doing good. How are you doing, man? doing good man it's great to see you. i want to thank you so much for taking your time i want you to look what i put up for you today look at what i just put I up for you that yeah i saw that i caught some of your words yeah i'm trying to i'm trying to clean my glasses and get a closer view yep if you recall you were with me when i bought this photo if you remember we bought this one i bought i think two more the last supper and another one with a uh, yeah. uh, hood dryer at abs that. yes at abs well, listen, brother, we got a lot of people be on, and they're just anxious to see you. Actually, I want you to know Sarah Mack came on. So our beautiful little girl Sarah Mack is on from uh, Lonza, I believe. Yes, Lonza. And, the original uh, Sarah Mack. I've that's heard. right. The original Sarah Mack. Thank you for that. Got you. But Jay, tell me what you got planned for, uh, for, uh, for us today. What's in store for us, brother? Well, I think right now uh, a couple things I want to share with you, and I think everybody's in the mix about, like, been on quarantine and lockdown, Sammy, and, like, what are we going to go back into, right? Like, like what is it going to be? You know what I mean? And everybody's got, like, this cloud with a question mark floating over their head walking around all the hairdressers. And I think we need to strategize and be doing some, you know, digital consultations some virtual consultations so we know what the heck is going to be coming in you know what i mean in relation to that and um 
some quick fixes. You know what I mean? We're not going to have the time to, even if it's a haircut we're talking about, Sam, you're not going to have time to give everybody a complete haircut, but some people are going to have to just go in and, you know, do some things and do some scanning and go through their tips or go right. through them. Some, some people, maybe you're going to have to go in and you're just going to do some texturizing to get them through. Because those first couple weeks, first few weeks are going to be really hectic. So if you could do some things to those people, a good portion of them, to hold them for a few weeks and then get them in, it's almost like what we've been trying to do with the hospitals. You know what I mean? Trying to extend it so that we could live a little better, right? We don't want to go crazy. So I have a couple things that I'm going to share with you that are just really quick things that are fun. Um, and uh, this one right here I'm going to share, Sammy, is a triangle shape. Something very simple, things that we could do. Again, I'm not going to have time to give full cool highlights to everybody or do a complete look, but what could I do to get you through? And I know we don't like to think about putting a Band-Aid on something when we really need surgery, Sammy. I know you feel that same way, but sometimes in life we get thrown unexpected curveballs and you got to just look at it like you talk about the coach. Which way is it spinning, kid? Which way is it spinning? And think about that coach teaching that little leaguer, Sammy, and watch the ball. And if you watch the ball, you know which way it's coming at you and you know which way to swing and how fast. So I think we're in that position as hairdressers now that we have to, you know, be strategic about what we're doing. So this look is something that I think about for blonde clients that come in and I don't have time to do all of them. So I'm just going to do like a root drop with Shazy Q Gloss because even if you don't love Redkin, you have Shazy Q Gloss. Even if you don't like to say the word Redkin, you use Shazy Q Gloss no matter what company you're from. That's the truth. It's number one in the world. So doing the shade and then doing a little detail really quick, something that's going to take about 15 or 20 minutes in the salon, but big impact. We want to water little, but bloom big. Okay, yeah. brother, listen, so, I'm going to turn you loose. I'm going to let you do your thing. I'll come back on perfect. with you in about the last, in about 45 minutes, I'll, you'll see me come back and do your thing. But I love what you're talking about, these little expressive, express kind of techniques that need to happen right now. Have some we fun. We have to do it. Have All right, some, brother. Any questions pop up, we'll pop them up for you, bro. Have All fun. Right, thank you. I appreciate it. All right. So eyes right here, my friends. Basically what I'm doing is I'm working off of a triangle is all that I'm working off. So if you look right up here, this is the shape that we're going to be working off of right there. So the widest point is on the face. The high point is up here. So my triangle is going like this, my friend. And there's the hairline. Everybody with me right there. First thing we're going to do is we're going to carve from the top. We're going to carve from the top. And that's going to be the first color that we work with. I'm going to move this a little back. Drop that down there for you. And I'm going to be working from the outside in, my friends. From where? That's right, from the outside in. So the first thing I'm going to do, I'll show you this. I'm going to carve, literally taking the same line that I took. So I'm taking that same line that I took and dropping it down. Would you agree that I'm always going to be left with a triangle? I'm always going to be left with the same shape. It's just going to get smaller and smaller with what I have. I have three different colors. In this case, I'm going in and I'm showing you with some brighter colors so that you can see the look. But on my finished result, I'm going to show you on blonde. So I go in. I'm taking this whole slice. Go in with my foil. You could use a mesh if you prefer. Let me spin it, spin her a little this way so you can get a better visual. I go in and I'm going to bring that right onto there. I'm going to take my first color. In this case, my first color is a red, and I'm going to take it and bring it on. Notice I haven't let go of the hair. One of the things that I find that colors do, Sammy, is we let go of the hair too soon, and I don't want to do that. I want to keep control of the hair because now the hair does exactly what I want it to do. Place my hand under there, make sure I get good saturation, and then depending on what you're doing, I want this whole piece to be this color. So I'm going in and I'm making sure that I color it on that base or that zone one. I don't need to fold my foil, Sammy. I'm just going to place the foil right on top of there and continue moving. I have my Sambia weaving comb that I use when I'm using dark hair. I have a light one when I'm using, or excuse me, I have a dark one when I'm using it on light hair. My light one when I'm using it on dark hair. So this same piece, remember this same piece, this is the same piece, my friends. Look, this is the same piece from the other side. 
So if you're with me, all that we've done is we've done this. We've just outlined that shape. So I'm going to take this one right here, bring it over the same way. Hot tip is you want to pinch from the top and the bottom. You don't want to pinch from the sides when you're taking sections. If we pinch from the sides, my friends, what will happen is you're going to gather the hair. And we want the hair to be as smooth and as flat as possible. So going in, taking my same color, that red that I used on the other side, and placing it down, not letting go of the hair. Now what's going to happen with this, if you're with me, I am going to start working from the outside in is what's going to start happening. So my color is always going to be the same in relation to I'm going from widest to narrow. Okay. Make sure I get those ends in there. All right. Now go in and make sure I get that base, that zone one. Oftentimes when I'm doing this on a blonde, Andrew, I will go in and I will do the base first or that zone one first. And then I'll go in and put all the other lines in what I'm doing. All right. So there's the first section. That's the first section, my friend, right there. So if you look down, Sammy, you see I'm always working, always working with the same section. It's still a triangle. All that's happening is it gets smaller and smaller. So now, same thing. I go from the high point and I carve down the line. I go from the high point, Sarah Mac, and I carve down and I drop that out. That's my next piece. I take this. And I get that out of my way, Sammy. Okay? And I just placed it right there. All right? Since I'm already on this side, there's no need to switch sides and go back to that other side, my friend. So I'm just going to take this that's here and bring it right onto that foil that is already there. I am going to switch my color. And now I am going to a blue visually so you can see it. Again, not letting go of the hair until I need to. Fold that back up if you have more length. You don't need to go and bring it down and do that pasta thing if you don't want to. You can just simply hold it up and bring it back up there. Now for those ends, go in, make sure I want to get that base, that zone one. So I'm going and I'm flat brushing, my friends. Notice how I'm going in and I'm going parallel with the hair. I'm flat brushing. I want to get the top surface of it, but I don't want to necessarily touch the scalp with my hair color, especially if I'm using something like a City Beats or a Vivid Colors. So you definitely don't want to. Just placing that foil right on top, going to spin her right around here. All right. And now, whoa, I was like, that's the wrong side. That's her back. That's her butt. All right. So here, I'll bring it up. Again, this is that side. Bring it down. So everybody with me, yes? Even the cool people? Andrew, you there? Sammy, cool people? Okay, this is my left side. Everybody with me? I'm working right, left, right, left. So I'm working from the outside in, constantly going in, 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 in. So this is the same color, right? This is my blue that will be that same color here. How many of you saw some purple right there? Because you know what? I put it in the wrong bowl. Say bad J. I put it in the wrong bowl. I got three bowls here. I got a blue, a red, and a purple, or a violet, whatever you want to call it. And I put my brush in the purple, not the blue. So you see a little purple. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to dominate it with blue. Because those of you that do color, like me or Sammy, you understand that blue is the most dominant primary, right? It's the uh, one of the primaries and it's the most dominant blue is going to always win the battle so if i put blue over anything it's generally going to win sammy so there you go place that my friend and place that there now here we are back at the front and you could see right there i'm still working with the same shape my shape does not change my friend all that happens is my shape gets smaller and smaller and smaller with all that's happening. So I'm going to go, I'm going to take this piece, drop that down, take another piece and drop this down. Okay, that will be a color and this will be another color, my friend. So that what I'm left with is that center piece. Okay, so this piece here will come and this will be one color right there. 
this piece here look on and this will be one color there my friend everybody with me even the cool people okay after i do those pieces i put a piece here i put a piece here and i'm left with my center piece and that center piece i'm going to do all one color my friend i'm going to do that center piece you have to decide how small that last piece is do i want to see a sliver that splits when I open a center part and I have a money piece that is right there, or do I want it to be wider so I have a thicker piece? It's all up to you. But here's all that we did. If you look up here, all that we did was we started with our triangle, my friend, and we went in and the first line we did, the first slices we did, because we're not weaving, we're coloring the whole shape. So the first thing we did was we went and we did that. And then we went in and we did another, right? And we did another. And then we go in and we do yet another. So all we're doing is we're following the shape of the section that we took, but we are creating the idea that when you open the book, you're going to have two perfect halves because of the fact of how it opens up with. Now, my inspiration for this was we were at the Met. And we were walking in the Met, and I started looking at all the paintings and all the things. And the whole idea was I realized that without beautiful frames and without a, a frame that attracts your eyes, Sammy, you don't even understand the painting, and you can't even see the painting. So do you want to see the finished look? Because I showed you this just so you could see the idea. Again, a triangle shape working from the outside in, outside in, outside in, outside in, so that when it's done, all you're left with is one small triangle, and you need to decide how small that's going to go, and when it opens up, it's going to split your book. Everybody with me? Even the cool people? All right, I'm going to show you the finished result then. I'm going to take this away. She's going to go do her model walk. All right, and now let's bring in the finished look. All right, let me raise her up a little bit for us so we can see her a little better. All right, so there you go. That's the finished look here. And I'll show you as I go through it, you could see on this one here, you see those different colors in it. On this one, I went in and I used the new Redkin Shade DQ. We have a new 10 series in the Shade DQ gloss. And I went in, we have a 10 GI, which I call a sweet butter love. We have a new 010 P for pearl. And we have a new 010T for titanium. So as you could see, I went in and I used all of those colors in this top section. Now let me show you what I'm talking about on that front section because you could see a little better there. So I'll go in here, Sammy, and I'll bring it back. Now let me comb this back. Now I don't like messing up my finishing because those of you that know me know I'm such a great finisher. All right, so look at there. Could everybody see that? Even the cool people? You see all the colors that are in there. And again, what I talked about going in and using right there, that's as wide as my triangle was right there. And you could see the colors moving from the outside to the inside, to the inside, to the inside, to where I only have one color, the sweet butter love, right in the middle. Relative to how you Style this, Sammy, is relative to what you're going to get and how you're going to see the colors. Because if I use a side part, I'm going to totally change and I'm going to add some dimension. The base color that I used for this was the new 9M for matte and shade DQ gloss. Everybody with me? Even the cool people? Questions, comments, concerns? Really quick? Anything we got, gentlemen? What was that? What was that? Is it warm or cool or a mix? The, the M series in the, the matte series are a blue green base in Shade DQ. So it's going to still give you an incredible polish and a shine of Shade DQ. When we think of matte, oftentimes we think of something that's flat or dull. It's definitely not flat or dull, but it's a beautiful color. It's like all these mushrooms colors and these cocoa colors that you're seeing that are really trending right now they're really really beautiful i would check them out the uh 
there's a two, a four, a seven, and an and a nine. Excuse me. Have you used this method using different depths, please? Yes. What I would say on the different depths is no more than two levels deeper. And what I mean by that is generally I do this on blondes or on redheads. When redheads, anything goes. But generally with blondes, I try not to do anything two levels deeper than where they are because uh, blondes generally see colors darker. And it's the same thing with low lights. If I'm doing low lights on blonde hair, I want to do maybe like a level six, a dark blonde to a medium blonde on their base or zone one. But as I go down to their mids and their ends, I'm probably going down to a level eight or a level nine, right? Question here, does it matter where the part is? Uh, it does matter where the part is, uh, my friend Amanda, because here's the reality. If I have a center part, I know that the book is going to open up and I'm going to have two perfect tabs with what I'm doing. If I have a side part, I need to adjust. So if I have a side part, here's what I'm going to do. If you have a side part, you're not going to take your whole shape and just shift it over because if you do that, you're going to be heavy on one side. What you want to do is you want to have two-thirds of your shape on the heavier side of the head or the deep side. So think about a swimming pool. In a swimming pool, there's a deep side and there's a shallow side. The deep side needs more water. The shallow side needs less water. So same thing. If you have a client that comes in and they have a side part, guess what? They have a deep versus shallow already. It's not your choice, Amanda. It's not my choice. It's just what it is. So if they have a center part, no, no problem. The book opens even. But if they come in and they have a side part, I need to adjust my coloring. I need to understand that the side that has more hair more head form needs more color. Just like a pool that is the deep side needs more water. The side that has less hair, less head form needs less. So that's why if I'm using a shape, Amanda, I would take the shape and shift it over, but I would make sure I had roughly about two thirds of my shape on the deep side and one third on the shallow side. Does that help you out? I hope it does. If it does, let me know. All right. Would you do anything different if they have a short fringe? Uh, great question. Well, let's play this out. If they had a short fringe, what does that mean? Relative to where you cut your fringe, I know when I've traveled with Sammy around the world, and he uses sometimes uses, you know, the eye socket and whatnot to go. The top of the head goes in, combs it down, and cuts that fringe. So if my guest had a fringe and I was cutting it, it would probably show it off, actually. A lot more everybody with me right it's going to show that off a little bit more if I went and cut a fringe yet obviously it's going to be a different application if I have a short fringe it's going to be a little harder to drag everything to the side yet could I do it yes you could um, in a perfect world I would try cut up color it first and then I would cut it yes but if they have a short fringe you could do it you just might not be able to get the drag that I got bringing it onto my foils would you use the new M on redhead? You could, but let's think about it. What are you trying to do with your redhead? Right? Like, what are you trying to really do with your redhead? Because it's a blue-green base, so we know that green balances out red, so the green part of it is going to brown out the red, but then what does the blue do? So you could do it, and it'll be beautiful, but it's not going to, um, if you're looking to totally brown out all the red, it's not going to totally brown it out. But yes, it's beautiful on redheads relative to what we're talking about. Because would you agree redheads come in a strawberry variety? They come in a cherry variety. They come in an orange variety. Reds look like nectarines. Red look like peaches. I talk about color and food because all of you eat, right? Just like all your clients eat. So yes, you could, but depending on what you were looking for, Liz. All right, we good? All right, we good? Moving forward. Yes, sir? All right, let me show you one other thing. Deal? All right, Sammy, could you field a couple questions? I need one minute. I got to grab a bowl. All right, James. Field a question. Yeah, I got you. Know, just, you know, one of the things I notice here is, once again, quite imaginative. It's so simple that Justin just did. But I made a note here, like, for me, I would have never thought, okay, you know, I'm such a, if I colored hair, I'm such a basic colorist. But I think sometimes it's about thinking outside of the box because that's really what's going to drive your business. And we're talking about express techniques. <laughs> Have yourself loaded up with these express, express techniques. Now, that is, was so cool because it really made that front pop. And I also was concerned about where's that part going to be? And as you can see, Justin talked about that in terms of 
If you move it, it just has this this duality of co of color working one way or the other. Uh, great question, also, Marissa, in regards to how short the fringe is. Fringe is. So you can see it really doesn't matter. But simple, simple technique, very resourceful. I think this is a technique that you can all use behind the chair. Once again, very imaginative. And I tend, like I said, I don't color hair, so you have to forgive me. I'm a colorist, I'm not. Yet when I have people and I'm working with people like Justin, I know I'm in good hands. So when you get back to the salon, start thinking about, you know, I mean, time, let's just face it, guys, time is going to be an issue. So it's about planning your time. Are you ready to plan that time accordingly and doing what you feel is socially right within your environment? We know that uh, there's a lot. Let me just give you an example while uh, Justin's getting his bowls ready. A lot of people are talking about uh, having their clients pre-blow dry their hair before they come in so they can drive cut them. So it saves them time behind the chair. Now, guys, I'm not here to say what's right or what's wrong. We're just, once again, at CMV, we just want to give you options. You embrace the option that's going to work for you, what's going to be best for your environment. But I don't know about you, but if I was a colorist, I'd be popping all over the place in terms of the technique that Justin uh, One question I see that's coming up, and we'll ask Justin when he comes back, I'll make a note of it, is a retouch. You know, a good question. How would you retouch that? Would you go in through and do like a, re a retouch in terms of, I don't know, zone one? Justin. And one of the questions we have coming up, bro, is uh, okay. retouch. How would you yeah. go in and retouch that technique? And is there a particular name for that technique? Uh, we call this technique the frame. Okay, the frame. Because it was inspired by going to the Met and seeing all of the frames that they have. Uh, mm -hmm. In relation to um, what you're asking about, how would we touch it up? First, I would say if there's gray hair, we would touch it up real easy, yes. So if there was gray hair, right, here I am, I'm back, my friend. If there was gray hair, it would be very easy to touch it up because we would just go in and we would touch up that gray hair, yes? If, if it was natural hair, though, I would think about what it was that I used, right? So what I mean by that is if you went in and you used something that was a a bleach or a decolorizer, you know, maybe I would want to go in and do something like a shade DQ and do a root drop. I don't necessarily need to go in in four to six weeks and touch it up. It's not going to grow out the same way, but I could possibly go in and do like a root drop or do like a root blending or do a smudge and tone to extend it. It really depends on how the person is wearing it. Some people will wear it look like this, very lived in, and other people will wear it very defined and want to see really crisp lines. So it really depends on the choice. But right. like, like anything, how do we retouch it? First, you got to do it, and then you take it step by step. Right. Okay, brother. Let's. So what are you going to do on this next one? What's this next one about? All right. So this next one, again, is something just really quick and going in on top of the head and using a diamond. Um, I like using diamond shapes or triangle shapes because I feel like I get a lot of movement from them and I also could split them up if I need to split them up. And what do I mean by that? I mean that a diamond is a shape that could very easily be split into either quadrants or it could be split into halves or areas, right? So I want to go in and work with a diamond. The hot tip that I want to give people though on a diamond, Sammy, is to be careful about the size of the diamond that you choose. Well, that's in life anyways, right? <laughs> but be careful about the size of the diamond that you choose because if the diamond is too large, my friend, you leave no, you leave no space on the head for any positive or negative space. Think about it. If my diamond is too large, if we have a top side, if we have top sides and back, and if my diamond dominates the whole top, there's nowhere for shadow. There's no movement. There's no nothing exciting. And we need positive and negative space in hair cutting and hair color to provide interest with what we're doing. So I'm going in. I have this diamond shape, and I've split it. I've gone in, and I've split it into two sections. So I have a front and back, my friend. So I will I'll switch this one to there, and I'll just show you on here. I have a diamond and I've just switched it. All I've done is separate it front to back right there. So I'm going to go in. I have three colors that I'm using. I'm using my 
going in and I am using my Shade DQ Gloss, the new 10 series. Let me show you my sectioning. So that's what I'm working with, my friends. This is the front, and I'm working right up there, okay? So I am going to go, what I'm going to do is I'm going to pivot off of this front piece, okay? So I'm going to pivot off of that front piece. Taking slices is what I'm doing. I will turn her this way so that you can see a little better. I can't do that. That's hard. Hold on. I know, Sammy, you get in all these crazy positions so that they could see and everything, and I try to do that, but it doesn't always work out, brother. So I'm going to take that, take my foil. I don't know what happened to my Sammy weaving comb. It's probably at my sink when I got my things. I'm going to go in with my first color, my GI. And I'm going in, and I'm taking it all the way to the wood. I'm taking it all the way to that zone one, to that base, my friend. Okay? Going in, making sure I get my application. Notice how I hold my arm there. Thank you. Thank you, beautiful Abby. Saves the day, Sammy. And I go in and get my saturation with what I'm doing. All right? Now, again, I do not need to go in and place the fo fold my foil. I will go in and I will just place a foil, hey, two of them, right on top, okay? Then I'm going to go in, take my next section. So I am standing so that we're all on the same page. I am standing right in front of my client. I'm working on the left side, okay? Let me balance you. There's my face, okay? I'm working on the left side, off of the left side. I am pivoting. So I'm making pies, right? I'm a pie maker today, Sammy. So I'm making pies. I will clip this so I just have that out of my way. I will spin this so you can see. I'm going to use the foil that is already there. Use the foil that's already there, comb from underneath, bring it down to that foil. Go to my next color. That first color was my 10P. I'm sorry. It was 010P. This color is my 10 GI, which is a gold iridescent. It's a gold violet base. And one of the things I say is it's finally a gold that like our blondes will want. Because we've been saying that blondes wanted gold and they love the warmth, but not here in California. They don't love it so much. They love to be a California blonde when it's a Ferrari, but they don't want to be a California blonde and be warm. And one of the things I love about this new 10 GI is it is incredibly, incredibly soft, and it looks very chic. So as you notice, all I'm doing is I'm placing my foils right to the line that I'm taking. I'm going to go in here, do the same thing, take this piece out of my way, and fanning out again off of going from the top but leading to my bottom. Taking this piece and doing what? Pinching it and bringing it down to there. Changing to my other color, my 010T for titanium. Okay. Make sure I have the saturation I'm looking for. Go in. Flat brushing to make sure I have the base. One of the things I love about the level 10s is it's about time. You know, the level system has always gone to level 10, and it's about time that Red King caught up with the rest of the color world and gave us some level 10s in Shade EQ. I love using my Crystal Clear Sarah Mac, but I also really want a nice chic level 10 that is just amazing. So here's the last piece I'm going to do. So you can see all that I've done, my friends, is I've worked from the left side over to the right side. I'm going to over direct this and bring it over to there. And now this is going back to the first color. So important there, what happened? What did I bookend my colors in, Liz? What did I do, Sarah Mac? Right? I went in because I'm having different colors here. They're not all the same size or shape, but to make everything work, Sammy, I bookended these front colors with the same color. So now what I'm going to do is just place that right on top. If this is a guest, I'm going to fold this, fold this chazine. And I'm just going to kind of 
roll it. Not the first hairdresser that ever rolled something up and not the last. All right. So I'm just going to kind of fold it like that. Booyah Shikan. So that's the front part. Now I'm moving to the back part. So up here, those of you that are sitting there going, what the heck did you do? Let me show you. Okay. Everybody here. Eyes here. Eyes here. Eyes here. Okay. So all that we did, this is the front, right? This is the front of the face. What we did was we took slices. This is all that we did. And we alternated our colors. We have one color there. One color there is our bookend. And in the middle, we have one color. And we have one color there. So we're using three colors in this top, but the outside are the same. The 010P. Then we have a GI. And then we have a T. Now with the back, I'm going to do the same thing. I'm just going to go from wide to narrow now in the back. Okay, everybody understand what I'm saying? I'm just going to go from wide to narrow in the back. Do you have any questions so far? Questions, comments, concerns? Quick joke? All right, I got a quick joke. I got a quick joke. What do you get when you cross an elephant and a rhino? <laughs> I know. Elephant, no. I know. You love that one, Sammy. That was a good joke, right, Andrew? All right, so now I'm working with the back. Check it out. I have my point, right, that I'm working with. Now I'm going to pivot, but I'm going to go to wide to narrow there. So think about it. In the front, we went wide to narrow, but what does that mean? We went from narrow to wide, so it's opening up in the face. In the back, we're doing opposite because we want it to go to skinny, to skinny, to skinny. We don't want the color to open up wide. It's going to look too chunky to Kelly Clarkson right now. Next month might be cool. Right now? Next one? Maybe. Maybe? Hmm. Maybe. Okay. All right. Sorry. What's that question, Sammy? Pop it up again, brother. All right. Going from narrow to wide. Bring that out. Taking that pie, working from the high point of the head, always combing everything out of your way. Do you like the gloss to gel processing solution for foils? Yes, I do. And straight up, straight up, like, like Paula Abdul used to say in the 80s, straight up now tell me. Yeah, right there. I do like the gloss to gel. You know why? Because it's thick and it's what I want. And for the longest time, we've been trying to, you know, get Shade DQ to be a little thicker, to stay on our foils a little bit longer. So, yes, I do. I'm sorry I didn't see your name who asked that question, but I definitely, uh, Love the gloss to gel a lot better, and I prefer it for uh, for hair painting and for balayage, low life, or any any foil work. Yes, thank you for that question too. So here, if I'm working with a larger section, check out what I'm going to do. I'm going to go in first, and I'm going to outline it because my section here is pretty large. So I'm not going to try and put it on the foil first and then go do it. Because especially with blonde hair, I might not get the saturation I'm looking for. So notice I'm going in and I am just outlining and making sure I get the base of it on there. Think about when you were a little kid, right? When you were a little kid and you used to go, uh, you used to color in your coloring book, right? How many of you, when you were a little kid, used to outline your shapes, right? You had your coloring book, but you would outline whatever it was you were coloring. Who were you? You know who you were. Could I tell you that I hated you? <laughs> I, I hated you as a kid. Did you do that, babe? Yeah. yeah. I hated my, my baby Abby did it when she was little. I hated her. I love her now. I'm going to marry her and give her a big stupid J-Lo ring, but I hated her when we were young. You know why I hated y'all when you were young? Because you had patience. You know what I mean? You would have a big section and you would outline it with blue. And it looked dark blue. And then they would turn their uh, crayon Carruthers and they would do it sideways and shade it. And it looked so cool because it was like outlined and framed. I never had the patience to do that. But when I'm doing this type of work, Sammy, that's exactly what I think of. I think of if I have a large section, what I want to do is I want to frame it and I want to set myself up for the win. So moving across again, notice I'm coming across. I'm going from large. And I'm going to go to small. 
In this case, I'm only going to use the three colors. I'm not going to use four colors. I'm going to use the three colors. So I've split it up going from wide to narrow in the back of the head. I'm going to drag this over, but first I'm going to outline, like I said, just like those of you that I hated when we were little kids because you used to do it in your coloring book. Then I'm going to bring it over. Notice I haven't let go of the hair, Sammy, and bring it over. You know, I loved what you said earlier, Sam. You were talking about the idea when we'd work together, and you would bug the shit out of me because you'd always say, yeah, Jay, they're married, and I'd be like, I respect marriage and this and that, but I want these things to change. So 100%, I would always talk to you about they just need to date. They need to date. And I think that when you see a color and a cut that date in such sync and harmony, there's nothing like it. You know what I mean? Because just like in a relationship, there has to be a give and take. And the same thing with this. One thing can't dominate. When I work with Sammy, one of the things that I love is I get a beautiful shape. But I also get something that will work for my color, not just a train wreck that is trying to get your attention. There's a purpose for it. And one of the things I like to use and talk about when I work with Sammy is balance and function. I love the idea that, you know, our looks have to have balance and function. They don't need to match, right? They don't even need to be relevant right now at this moment if they make you think, but they need to balance and function, Sarah Matt. All right? So this is the last piece that I did, bringing it over, right, like that. And then I will go in. I will put my foil on top. Now, this is how I work. You don't have to work this way by any means. Some of you might see my foils and be like, damn, that's a train wreck. Some of you might see my foils and be like, I love them, whatever. I'm not here to try and impress you with my foils. I'm not even here to try and impress you. I'm just here to try and break some bread and show some things with you that work for me and that I have success. Because for me, we make life really hard, Sammy. Uh, generally, it's either left or it's right. And if it's not to the left or to the right, it's probably in front of you. And it's either if it's up or down, it's probably right in front of you. Sometimes we make it, um, you know, too hard, really. So that's that finished look. Let me show you that finished look. And I got that question right there for sure. All right. So I'm going to put that to the side, and here's our finished look. Okay. So here is our finished look. Let me get her up a little higher right here so you could see. Now, I did a little difference on this one. You see the base of it here is the 09M, again, a 9M for matte that we used for all the underneath base. Everything is a diamond up top. The same thing that I used there. The difference is I did a different application on here. But you could see, do you see, you could see the variety. It's still very light. You see the difference in the T, the GI, as well as the P for, flat, for uh, pearl, right? So let me show you what I did on this one. Let me get you up, girl. Where are you at, girl? Wait, there, there you go, baby. There you go, there you go, there you go. Yeah, mama. All right. So on this one, let's, let's catch up this one, all right? This is the face. Everybody with me? Even the cool people? All right, let me put her right here. Her right there, all right? So even the cool people, that's what we did in the face. So we have our bookend, right? From the left and the right side, those are going to be the same colors. And then we have our GI and our T in the middle. In the back, what we did in the back was, we came and we did the same thing almost. We split it coming to there, right? So what happens is we have the same thing, two different halves that are kind of meeting, but what you're going to get in the back is you're going to get a little skinny. Now, before I close this section out, let me show you really quick what I did for this one. Same diamond, same diamond right here on this one I did, except on this diamond, We did this. So on this diamond, the top color that you see is my 10 GI. The next color that you see that is white is my 10 P for pearl. And the last color that you see is my T. So there's three colors in this, but we did it like a bullseye. Okay? So we did this like a bullseye. I call this one, Sammy, high point. And the reason I call this one high point is 
because when I take my sectioning, when I take my diamond on top of the head and place it on top of the head, I start from the high point of the head. So with this girl, where that top part is that you see on there, that green part, the GI, that lives right here on the high point of the head. So you have probably about the size maybe of like a silver dollar, no bigger, maybe a silver dollar, maybe a little cutie, right? Those of you that are into fruit, maybe it's the size of a little cutie. If you go to Vegas, maybe it's a silver dollar. And then it just is like a bullseye. But instead of it being a round bullseye, Sammy, it's a diamond bullseye. Make sense? Questions, comments, concerns? No quick jokes. I already did that. And I did see there was a question about corrective color. You know, I think the, 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 the hot tips I would give you for corrective color are take it in bite-sized pieces, you know, and find out. Uh, we have something in Redkin called our shared reality, you know, and it's what we share with our guests. And it's like the reality is if it's too warm, too cool, too light, too dark, it's probably corrective color. And that's damn near everything that walks in the door, right? So just um, take corrective color in bite-sized pieces and don't jump in head first, you know, because sometimes in corrective color, we jump off the bridge before knowing how deep the water is below. And I'd rather you know how deep the water is. Could you go deeper with the colors to have more contrast without drowning out the base color? Uh, in this specific one, Amanda, uh, you could, yet you need... Think about, um, think about what it is, right? If I have a level nine as my base and I decide to go deeper in my section, there's nothing wrong with it. But understand, like if I look down and everything is a nine out here and I put something that is a six or seven, when it spills into it, do you see that it's going to dig into it visually? Okay, so there's nothing wrong with that. Yet understand that darkness closes in lightness opens up right so relative to what i want to see what i might do creatively is i might go in and put something deeper on the base down zone one and two those mid and then do something lighter so it more melts into the end something like that amanda would be pretty rock hey jay one really quick question yes. i saw there that i thought was pretty uh, you know it's pretty might be it's basic to me but what's the difference why do you Overlay your foils versus folding your foils. That was one simple question we had in there. Uh, well, uh, for me, it's, it's just the practicality, efficiency of use. You know what I mean? It's like if I'm trying if I'm trying to run from here to your house, I'm going to get there a lot easier if there's not a lot of hill. Uh huh. Right. If it's a straight line, I'm going to be able to get to your house really efficiently, and I'm going to see the path. And sometimes in foils, we fold them up, and it starts just building and building and building. So there's other times where it makes sense. We just call it like a sandwich wrap where you just put foil on top of foil. Because in my foil work, Sammy, I want everything to be as flat as it could be. I don't want to build forms in the hair. I don't want to have a Rolodex in the hair. Google Rolodex if you don't know what it is, kid. <laughs> yeah. Okay, Jay, listen, man, there was a lot of love for you today, bro. I know you got to move on to your uh, lockdown session. If you don't know what I'm talking about, every day Justin's doing a lockdown session, just really getting into Justin's head and just general casual conversation in terms of what's going on. Also, don't forget to follow Justin on the world of Justin Isaac, and that's I-S-A-A-C. I learned that the hard way. And also, <laughs> the other thing is, you know, get yourself to a class. You, a lot of you have great questions. Let's not forget that this whole thing that we're doing in terms of this whole virtual education, social education is a great resource. But we really want you to check out Justin at the Redkin Exchange. Justin, do we have a class coming up in 2021? Maybe we'll have a class, you think? Uh, I think we will. But I do know on June 9th, we are doing a virtual class, you and me. Oh, yes, that's right. Thank you, Justin. Yes, June 9th, we'll have a virtual class and looking forward to that. So that's going to be through Redkin Exchange Live. Yes. Don't forget to miss that. But once again, follow Justin Isaac on the world of Justin Isaac, and it'll turn your color world around just like he's opened up my eyes to color. Justin, brother, thank you so much for being on today. And I got a new joke. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it's yours, brother. It's yours. Uh, I, love well, you, I appreciate it, Sammy. I appreciate all the people on here, and we appreciate what you're doing for this industry. 
You know, um, you're a beacon of hope for all of us right now. You've mentored a lot of us, but I like it because you just keep pushing and doing it. And last thing I'm going to say, get some ear pods, brother. I want to hear you better. Okay. You got it, bro. Coming at you. You know it. I love you. All, all right. right. Love you too, bro. My love to the family. All right. All right, guys, listen, thank you so much for uh, for this, but I've got a couple things. Uh, coming up May the 17th is a really special day for the San Via brand. Um, I really felt that there's a lot of people out there that need some resources for help. And one of the biggest resources that have been available to a lot of people has been the Professional Beauty Association. If you're not sure what I'm talking about, visit probeauty.org and check out uh, pbaprobeauty.org. And check them out because they have something called the COVID-19 uh, Relief Fund. And it is a fund where you can actually apply. And we've been sent some videos that are pretty awesome that we're going to share on May 17th that really touched my heart. Actually brought a couple of tears to my eyes in regards to people that received a small check, but yet talked about how they were able to feed their family for a week because it helped put groceries on the table. I think we all need to realize that there's, there's people out there that just need some positivity. They just need some help. So May 17th, what we're going to do is we've gathered some friends, uh, some really legends, icons, and mentors of mine over the 40 years that I've been in the industry, reached out to every single one of these people, and they all said, yes, Sam, count me in. They're giving up their time. They're donating their time so that we can raise money for a fundraising benefit for the PBA COVID-19 Relief Fund. You'll have an opportunity that day to simply press the donate button, I'm glad to say that all that money is going directly to the PBA COVID-19 social the, the relief fund. Uh, my team will not touch the money. It goes directly there. And I'm very excited about that because immediately it goes out to those people that are in need. Once again, that's Sunday, May 17th. Don't forget next Tuesday, I'll be back up on next Tuesday. And what I want to talk about is I want to talk about tools. And I want to talk about the what when, how, and why behind the tools in terms of what do I use, when do I use it, how do I use it, why do I want to use it. And I think that's something that we're going to have to pick up our pace up a little bit in terms of understanding the tools so you can get to the end result much quicker in terms of the texture or what you're trying to do in terms of debulk something. I'm going to talk about all of that, not necessarily texturizing techniques, but when to pick up a short shear, when to pick something longer up, when to pick up a texturizing shear, when to pick up a razor. Every tool has a specific reasoning. If we understand the limits and capabilities of our tools, it's going to make it a lot easier when you go back to work, uh, when that happens to be, as some of you I know are back to work. So us to you, we want you to stay safe, guys, my friends. You know, let's overprotect versus overact. And most importantly, let's continue to be positive out there in terms of what we're doing, how we're, you know, we're all getting squeezed right now. But I think what's so important to remember that what's being squeezed out of it, it's all good stuff. And let's compliment and support each other as an industry. We are the beauty industry. Thanks for watching. And we'll see you next Tuesday. Same time, same place, and all about tools. Thanks again. Enjoy your day.